Hey everybody, it's Mark T, and it's time for another episode of Random Review. Also, sorry I haven't been making videos for a while, I've been kind of in a generally relaxed state, and I just really haven't been all that focused lately. But I'm back with videos at least once or twice every week. At least that's my plan. Uh, if I don't, then I apologize, but you know what? Making a plan in the first place is what generally screwed me up before, so... You know what? No plans. Anyway, I'm here to... to uh, blah, I'm here to review the movie called Pan. Now, if you didn't know, I have been a huge Peter Pan fan since I was a kid. Much like a lot of people were introduced by Peter Pan, however, I saw the Disney movie first before I ever read the book. Keep in mind, actually, I actually haven't read the book yet. So, any misconduct that was in Pan... Um, like, there's some stuff in Pan that I might have missed, or... But other stuff, but generally the Peter Pan movie has most of what you really need to know about the universe Now I've seen a lot of reviews of people hating on this movie not liking it generally despising it and while It certainly is not great And I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I enjoyed it I'm not thinking it's a great movie. To be perfectly honest, my favorite Peter Pan movie, slash favorite movie in general, is Hook, with uh, Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman. Um, but this movie wasn't bad, necessarily. Like, you know what, screw it. This is my review show, and my opinion is the only thing that matters when it comes to this. I mean, if you hate the movie, then fine, that's your own opinion, that's fine. Um, but in my honest opinion, I think the movie was okay. So, the movie basically starts off with with some random woman in a coat. We are assumed to, it's assumed that it's Peter Pan's mom who is dropping him off in front of an orphanage. Well, basically an orphanage run by nuns. And, you know, a few years later we see, we see Peter's grown up to be a bit of a troublemaker, constantly getting in trouble, fighting with the nuns, whining about stuff. And we also see that there's a bit of a dark side to this orphanage in the fact that, well, the head nun is a total bitch. She basically takes all of like the really good food and leaves all the kids with just gruel and oatmeal, which isn't, well, no, it is bad because, you know, it's a recession, people. Like, a war is going on, and, like, she's holding up all the good stuff. Seriously, what the fuck? Um, so, later on, we see that, uh, we see, like, Peter trying to find where all the good stuff is, the bacon and the food and stuff, and then him and his friend, I can't remember their names, uh, uh, they end up going into, like, the secret compartment that the head nun has in her office, which actually has a bunch of food and money and stuff. So, they're wondering what's been going on. Also, they see that the kids seem to be mysteriously gone every after every morning. And this turns out to be, oh, guess what? It's pirates. I mean, come on, how obvious is this? So, apparently, the pirates are going in there in the night. And let me just say, the way they get kids is, like, the most... Uh, the most ridiculous way. When you're kidnapping someone, not that I'm trying to aid and abet in any kidnapping, seriously, that's wrong, but if you're going to take kids, keep in mind, I'll explain it later, um, but if you're taking kids, you're trying to be as quiet and as stealthy as possible. These people come down on uh, bungee cords, taking kids from their beds, and then up into their room, and up into their... Ships! What kind of stupid shit is that? I was so sorry for the swearing. Um, it's just so elaborate and so unnecessary. Uh, we eventually find out that the head nun has basically been selling these kids to the pirates. So that's how she has all the money and stuff. We move on to when Peter's, Peter's friend gets kidnapped and Peter himself gets kidnapped. Um, and they get put on the ship. And it's here that we find out that Peter is actually afraid of heights, which I guess isn't much of a surprise, to be perfectly honest. But 
I don't know, I mean, just, it's, a, it's a guy that can fly. You assume that he wouldn't be afraid of heights. Anyways, taking too much time explaining this. So, we move on and we generally, we have, we have a meeting where, where we find out all of the kids that are kidnapped by, by Blackbeard's crew, um, are put to work in a mine to find this thing, it's, it's fairy dust stuff that it can apparently keep Blackbeard young, which is just, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, all that happens. Uh, we end up meeting up with Captain Hook, who is, like, this is the thing I find probably the most funny. And it's here that I honestly say you gotta take this move with a grain of salt. This is nowhere in the continuity of Peter Pan. And never, like, just don't even take this as a canon-based story. Moving on. So, we see Captain Hook is an Indiana Jones-esque guy. One of those guys, like, very much like Indiana Jones and Han Solo, that's good, sort of, but also kind of a jackass. So, stuff happens. Peter and Hook become closer, and we find out that Peter can fly after Blackbeard knocks him off of the deck. Um, although he does not have full confidence in it, as such, he cannot fly. Which is weird, again, because I assumed that, like, when it comes to flying as Peter Pan, my assumption is basically what's said in what I think is in the Disney, uh, the Disney movie, as well as Hook in which you need a happy thought to fly. And then after you have that, like, happy thought and also confidence. And after you have those two things, you can fly like a champ. You know, just like Starfire from Teen Titans. Um, so, yeah, all that stuff happens. Um, Peter, Hook, and Smee all escape and end up running into these, I, I believe they're supposed to be the Native Americans. Uh, not 100%, like just this tribe of people uh, where they have to be put through tests which test is basically just Hook Hook fighting a very acrobatic guy um, moving on so eventually they find that Peter has this pan flute necklace thing and you know there's it's like yeah he's the pan the pan for the movie pan and he is the chosen one, and he can save all of us, and bring his fairies, and... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to rush through this, because these videos take way too long. Um, so eventually, Blackbeard's crew comes up on, on the tribe's village, destroying and killing quite a few of them. Which leaves only our three lead characters, Peter... Yeah, Peter, the um, princess, whom I, I don't think they ever say her name and Hook. And, you know, all the usual stuff happens. It's basically a journey movie at this point. And they reach the end. And they end up finding this old ship that, uh, sorry. They find this old ship that Hook puts back together. And then he does, like, the classic Han Solo-esque thing. Like, you know, I've said I've helped you up until this point, and then I'm out of here. So he leaves. Peter and the princess go to hopefully find <clears throat> find the uh, the place where all the fairies still exist, and that part it just is very rushed through because they, they go and they see that uh, it said earlier in the movie that Peter can't actually uh, read. I, I don't know, maybe he's illiterate, but he can read fairy language. So what ends up happening is we find out that Peter is the key to opening opening this door to the to the fairies world. Blackbeard gets there, takes Peter's necklace, that's a key, and then all this other stuff happens. And basically Peter and the princess are screwed up until big shock, Indiana Jones Indiana Solo uh, comes breaking in with his ship and nails them and then everything turns out all good and happy and fun. Peter realizes that he is a real boy and he can fly and everything's all dandy with the fairies and such. <sighs> so that was a long synopsis. Let's talk about 
things itself. Now, I'm assuming the biggest things that seem to bother people about this movie are probably just the way that the characters are. There's not much development, and honestly, when I think Captain Hook, I'm thinking James Hook from either, again, the Disney movie or the movie Hook. Hook, like Dustin Hoffman, is the ideal rule I see as a live-action Hook, but Hook's not supposed to be a bad guy. And let's say, hypothetically, that this is the main story. Like, let's say this is where all of this stuff started. And Hook was just a simple guy that got captured by a black beard and then eventually became a pirate. There's got to be two answers you got to find. In the movie, at the end, we find that that Hook has the ship and they're all flying around with all of Peter's friends that eventually become the Lost Boys. Um, and then you're just assuming, like, what? It's an example of the, I've, I've been thinking of is like how in the original Ben Se Den series, um, there's an episode called Ken Ten, where we see that Kevin Lemon in the future is evil. He is an evil person that has a son that's not as evil, and, you know, shit comes from there. But then, continuity changes when you get to Alien Force, and Kevin becomes a good guy. Like, forever. So you're either thinking, either some point in the future, he becomes some jackass evil villain again, or he, j they just changed history. And that's where the problems of this movie come in. It's just really, really bizarre and weird and stupid. And then there's this stupid little line at the end. And, you know, hey, Pete. Hey, Hook, we're going to be friends, right? It's like, yeah. No wonder. Uh, sorry, I've been talking about this too long. But, honestly, again... I don't think the movie's all that bad. There are far worse movies, like the movie I'm going to review for my 400th video on this channel. There are still seven more videos I need to make, or six more videos I need to make before we get to that point, however, so let's hope they are good ones. Anyways, that's it for now, and uh, see you later.